Welcome to a new vlog, the first one in 2019 and what better way to start the year than with a uh, in the mail video, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. As some of you might know, I've recently created my Patreon page, so for those that would like to support me making these videos, you will find a link in the description below. Any pledge amount is appreciated, even one dollar. Just imagine if half of my sub subscribers uh, would be pledging one dollar a month. And if you can't offer any donations, that's fine too. My content will continue to be free. I'm gonna start the year with a new car plug charger. This one is from Base US, and as you can see, I've already opened the box and uh, tested the charger. I wanted to have a quick charge compatible charger because I am using a 10 watt wireless charging pad that works best with a QC compatible charger because it will switch to a higher voltage and it will deliver power more efficiently to the pad. It has two outputs, one is USB type C, the other one is normal USB and it supports quick charge on both of these. I'll show you some of the specs here, as you can see quite a wide range of voltages and current supported on the output, up to 30 watts total power. I like the uh, base US products, they have a uh, premium feel, they're not your usual low quality stuff that you get from China. They do cost a bit more, um, but they provide some decent quality in return. The charger uh, seems to be built from aluminium, like a flashlight. It looks really nice with this uh, matte black finish, but I would assume it will get scratched pretty easily uh, by inserting this into the uh, cigarette lighter uh, socket. Nonetheless, it's a good looking compact charger that does the job really well. So I will put a link in the description if you would like to check this out. For those that are interested in a professional made PCBs, I would like to announce the sponsor of this video, jlcpcb.com, which is a professional PCB manufacturing service with very affordable prices. You can get 10 PCBs for just $2 and a stencil for just $6. I'll place a link in the description so you can check them out. In Vlog 168, I did a teardown of some items sent in by a viewer and uh, besides the IP phone and the Jabra Bluetooth speaker, he also sent in a couple of Microsoft USB headsets. But unfortunately they were old and the uh, earphone pads were disintegrating, making a mess. The first time I ordered uh, a set of these, uh, just to check them out and see if they work as a replacement, uh, immediately as I confirmed they fit the headphones nice, I ordered this second set uh, because I had two headphones, so here they are. Pretty cheap uh, earphone pads, they're not excellent quality, I don't expect these to last very long, but they will allow me to use those headphones at least another couple of years because they just work. Next I have a set of uh, 10 pieces of these uh, plastic pry tools. I got them in a nice blue color, very inexpensive for a set of 10. They claim these are ESD safe and uh, I use them pretty much all the time when I need to take something apart. And because it's a trend, every piece of equipment these days tends to use some sort of plastic clips or glue to hold the enclosure together, so everyone should keep a set of these in, in their toolbox. They're rather a soft material, so these will not scratch the front panel of a nice gadget, for example. I'm also using these to um, unclip various small connectors inside devices. I prefer to use something like this over tweezers. Uh, it feels like you could break less with one of these if it snaps into the PCB, while uh, with the tweezers you could do some damage. Next, I'm gonna show you a really nice panel meter which can do 150 volts and 15 amps measurement. It has a nice backlit graphical LCD and just let me connect it to a power supply to show you how nice it looks and what kind of uh, measurements it offers. So as you can see it has a nice uh, graphical LCD with backlight which means you can use it even in a dark room situation and it provides a full set of measurements. You get voltage, current, power, impedance, energy, capacity and temperature. It has a date time function uh, timer as well um, and it also outputs data via UART which I believe can be accessed um, through a uh, pin terminal 
on the back maybe it's this one yep i see some uh, rx and tx markings in there also on mine on this type of screen i get this uh, small connection icon i'm not sure if it has any bluetooth module uh, built in but it's possible that it supports one via that uart port uh, it even has a uh, menu for configuration where you can access uh, various settings and uh, where you can configure some alarms for over voltage under voltage over current situations it also has a uh, buzzer on board so whenever the alarm is triggered you will get an uh, audio alert as well for the uh, temperature measurement it uses a standard 10k ntc through this uh, jst connector they provide you with a sample thermistor in the package but you could easily replace this one with another 10k thermistor in a different package for easy attaching to a heatsink for example you get the option of powering this through the measurement port but you also get an auxiliary uh, power input uh, in the case that you would like to measure down to zero volts without losing power to the meter so this small panel meter pretty much does everything you would want from a panel meter this should be great for your next power supply or dummy load project i'm really happy with what i got for the money this looks like the nicest panel meter i've had here so far i know i previously had one with the oled screen which was nice in terms of the measurements but this one is even nicer uh, with the bigger display so do check it out there will be a link in the description to this item Next up, some blades for the hobby knife. You've seen me get these before. They're available in different shapes. Take the one you like. It's just not worth trying to sharpen these when they go blunt. They are very inexpensive, so it's just easier to replace the blade when you need a fresh one. But if you're in a situation where you don't have any replacements, then you might have to sharpen one of these uh, thin blades. I've also ordered this uh, set of U-shaped uh, crimp terminals. I got different sizes in this assortment kit. There should be about 300 pieces in total in here and the description claims these are copper crimps. I don't know how to check if that's true or not. Maybe to test them with a magnet to see if they're at least uh, non-magnetic. Let me get a magnet. So yeah, they, they don't stick to a, a magnet. That doesn't mean they're copper, but at least they're not some painted steel. I will also be needing a crimp tool to use with these. Uh, I'm not sure which model, but I'll have to look on AliExpress to find one that's cheap and also hopefully good enough. Uh, these are designed for crimping multiple wires together, like it's shown here in this image. Maybe I'll order that uh, crimp tool shown in the image as well from AliExpress. As you know, crimping wires, if done correctly, is considered a more reliable connection than soldering wires together. That's why you will never see soldered wires in uh, uh, demanding applications like automotive wiring. Everything is crimped there. It's even better if you can do ultrasonic welding or crimping, but that's not really something available at hobby level. So we will have to stick to mechanical crimping for where we want maximum reliability. I would appreciate if you would let me know in the comments if you used uh, these types of U-shaped crimps before and what tool did you use for crimping them. Next up I have a couple of uh, short CAT6 Ethernet cables. These are uh, thin Ethernet cables and being so short makes them ideal for connections on very short distances like if you have a fiber converter right next to your wireless router you don't want a big mess of wires there. Since the two boxes are just on top of each other a 10 cm or 15 cm Ethernet cable is perfect for connecting those two. You can find these in different colors and different lengths. Pick the one that's best for you and thank me in the comments for the suggestion. And the last item in today's video is this uh, set of USB Type-C breakout modules. It contains both the uh, female and the male connectors. They are nicely soldered to a uh, breakout PCB. Now the male connector seems to have less pins broken out to the pads than the female connector does. Not sure what the deal is there. But I figured I should keep one of these uh, 
USB Type-C breakout boards around here because they are becoming so commonly installed on gadgets that I might need to repair or debug one soon. Instead of having to wait for weeks for one of these to arrive from China, I prefer to have it in the lab if I ever need to use one. That was all for today. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section. Don't forget to check out the links I placed in the description of the video and my new Patreon page to show your support. As usual, thank you for watching and I will see you next week with a new video.